Estás viendo Canal América, Televisión Dominicana para el Mundo. A Time for True Show is sponsored by the office of Dr. Bernard Fiakoff, a periodontal, dental implant and laser specialist in New York City, for over 40 years. Dr. Fiakoff was honored by the International College of Dentists and Pierre Fauchar and received the Presidential Lifetime Humanitarian Honor from the White House. Call us at 718-229-3838. Sometimes life can be so damn hard You don't know where to go Everything is falling apart Yeah You try to do your best But only God knows That you've given everything you've got But the world gets you down You just keep moving on at your feet. Welcome to a Time for True show. I'm your host, Dr. Bernard Fialkoa, and it's a pleasure to be with you again. The summer is flying by, but I hope you're enjoying it. And tonight, we have a very special guest. And it's an important topic that we're going to be covering because, you know, our world is advancing, but what are we doing for our youth? Are we guiding them? Are we educating them? Are we letting them learn from our mistakes? Or are we letting them just loose into this crazy world? that I know most of us see is going on spiraling many times out of control. So engineer, if you will, let's introduce our guest tonight, Gary Tank Barnes. Let's put up his images. Mr. Barnes is from Harlem, New York, where he attended Brandeis High School. And if you will, engineer, let's put up his images on the screen so the viewers can actually see Gary Tank Barnes on the screen. There we go. There he is in an interview where he went to Coppin State University. He attended St. Mary's and Coppin State College and founded the Real Harlem Basketball Players Organization. He runs a private investigation firm and was a renowned starting guard for the 1976 NAIA National Championship Coppin State Eagles team. They compiled a 39 win and only two losses marked back then. And Tank recorded 398 total assists, averaging 10.8 assists per game both of which are CSU records. There you see him. He was named Mr. Eagle following the season and was a member of the Groove Phi Groove fraternity. Following graduation, he had roles in numerous documentaries highlighting the history of basketball in the historic black colleges and universities in New York City and in Rucker Park. His Real Harlem Basketball Players is a group which highlights, celebrates, and honors outstanding Harlem basketball players and contributors from several generations and highlights those who made a name for themselves and left a mark in the minds, hearts, and memories of the entire Harlem basketball community. <clears throat> He's going to have a very special event this weekend, this Saturday, August the 10th, to share with the world about the real basketball players from Harlem and the rich Harlem basketball history created over so many years. Engineer, let's 
bring him up live on the screen and a bit of warm welcome to Mr. Gary Tank Barnes to a Time for True show. How you doing? It's a, good, a pleasure to have you on the screen. Pleasure to have talk to you again. Absolutely. I wanted to ask you something. What inspired you as a young man to work so hard at basketball? Well, in Harlem, basketball is a vehicle that can get you places where you normally couldn't go if you didn't play basketball. For example, you know, me and my friends did something in another neighborhood and we got caught because I was such an exceptional basketball player. They let me go and beat up my friends. Absolutely. Well, you, you know what? It's interesting in life that when you put out and you create for other people, how it comes back to you. And uh, that's a very good point that you're making. Now, I want to ask you something because I see that you're a very strong advocate for the Holcomb Rucker Park community and the Sunny Hill suburb basketball programs. Uh, tell our viewers a little bit about those programs and why you know they were so important. Well, first of all, they were free <laughs> at no cost. All right, we're nowadays with the AAU, all these camps and trainers, everything costs. So you take a young parent in an urban area, even in the suburbs, who's barely had enough money to pay her bills or pay his bills, looking in. Whereas when we came up, we were being recruited. I mean, these guys come out in the neighborhoods and watch through the fence and then ask you to come to their programs. Now, the game we have on Sunday that involves New York and Philadelphia, the relationship with me and Mo Howard started with the Holcomb Rucker All-Stars playing the Sunny Hill All-Stars in the 60s in Philadelphia and New York. We both went away to college. He went to the University of Maryland professionally. And we got together and said, we got to start this. So whenever we play New York, Philadelphia, we let the kids know how all of us started off at 12, nine years old, and now we're in our 60s and 70s, and we remain friends, and it at no cost. So everything we do, the kids don't pay no money. That means transportation, uniforms, food, no cost. It's a cost. That's when you see kids at stoplights with buckets rounding up money. So they, so they can get to these AAU programs. And they are missing the kids who really need it. All right? Our parents didn't drive us to college. We caught the bus, the Greyhound. These kids now, they're getting driven to college in SUVs and Cadillacs. So where, where is the effort for the work? Everything is being given to them. And then the ones who really need something are not being given nothing. So if you take a kid, even an adult, and you put him next to a hot dog stand, he's going to buy one, somebody's going to give him one, or he's going to take one, or he's going to get one of them hot dogs. You understand what I'm coming at? So these Absolutely. kids out here now in the streets that people are classifying them as monsters and this and that, it wasn't born like that product of the environment they coming out of so if you don't care nothing me, why should i care something about you and as i get older i get bigger i get tougher you know just like a dog you know just like a, a gorilla just like as i get older i get bigger and if i'm mad i get stronger you know and i'm gonna do something and prison <laughs> It's uh, not the answer. That's not the answer. Now, let me ask you a question. Sunday, I wanted to mention this on the show again. Where is this basketball 
classic that you're having. Where is this? At Millbank Community Center on 18th Street between Lenox and 5th in Harlem, New York City. Good. So Millbank, Millbank Community Center. Millbank. Okay, and those of you Mill watching. M-I-L-B-A-N-K is the only center with that name in the whole state of New York. So if you make it to Harlem and ask somebody, where is Millbank? They're going to tell you right where it is. Absolutely, August 11th. And they can watch and participate and in this. And, every, and, you, and you know what? Eat some hamburgers and hot dogs. They, there you go. And then they can help, they can help this cause move forward. Because I know you could probably, like I do, can use help, have other people help That's you right. to make these programs. So, you know, I think it's a good cause. Let me ask you a question, because it kind of leads from what you're saying. Tell us a little bit, because a lot of viewers may not know this. What's the significance and the importance? What was this Eastern League and why did it exist, this Eastern League? You had the NBA which was predominantly white. So you had to have a farm system. And, and, and it's funny that the Eastern League was mainly black guys. So if you can go, and then we'll pick you up. Same thing, Harlem, all these were places where a black guy could get a chance to play against the white professionals. And unfortunately, they used to win. So to keep from getting lynched and hung, they put the fun part in to keep the people laughing. Eastern League for guys who wanted to continue playing competitive basketball after college. And hopefully an NBA program come and watch them and maybe give them a chance. But it was just extending your career. Because a lot of guys really like to play basketball and when the air of the basketball a lot of guys have a plan b so now try to let the kids know that you have to use sports before sports use you and we show them plenty of examples of guys who could play real good but they didn't get picked and it wasn't because they couldn't play they you know it's all about luck you know if you can go into the store and pick the Powerball number, that's the same thing you could do. You could say, I'm going to make the pros. That's how hard it is. And a lot of guys just hung around too long. I mean, they go back to their colleges and want the college to do something for them after they're finished. I used to tell the guys, when you shoot that last shot as a senior, it's over. Somebody else getting the, getting the stuff now. They ain't going to take care of you the rest of your life. So you need to get everything you can from them before they tell you it's time. To very interesting. So what, you know, it's very interesting as I speak to you because it real life makes a lot of sense, a lot of good advice you're giving. What motivated you to form the real Harlem basketball player organization that you run? Well, the key word is real because we had too many people who was describing us that have never been to Harlem, don't know nobody, you know, come here, pick a few tracks, you know, because we all, all the stories that used to come out of Harlem are mainly tragedies, whether it's sports, drugs, gangsters, these all end in a tragedy. We got a lot of guys who didn't have a tragic life. But that doesn't sell. So we got together and said, we're going to have a program called The Real Harlem Basketball Players and show how these guys could really play, were productive citizens, represented their community best they could, but some they can on ESPN or, or B, you know, because it's, it's, everybody's involved in this taking advantage of people. It's not just confined to black and white. All right? You have just, just as many black people that are racist as you have white people that are racist. So they're willing to offer a group, but they're friends in the Hall of Fame who ain't qualified. 
So we eventually start getting people out. Or they wanted to use the organization to make money. We wasn't about that neat. Uh, we all break even most of us that's on this board of eight go out of our pockets days for the church, the food, the transportation for the children to get to Philadelphia, the uniforms. Now, we've had people who tried to be sponsored, but they came with an agenda and tried to change what we do just because he happened to play a game in Harlem. This program is, de is designed from Harlem. Little community that's in the borough of Manhattan in the city of New York that's been competing against other boroughs, states, countries, you name it. No community. But, you know, you would think the whole country. Very interesting. Well, tell us, you know, this Saturday, you're holding your Hall of Fame induction event. So tell us a little about where it's going right. to be so the people who want to know what's going to happen, who's getting inducted. Go ahead, Gary. Okay. This will be the fourth year of the Hall of Fame. These were great people, coaches, basketball players, sponsors that never received any awards from the state of New York. But we have a New York City Basketball Hall of Fame. Three eleven. These guys were great. I mean, the kids, the coaches that we put in, so many kids, the players that we put in were outstanding. So then the next year, I said, we need a bigger place. And it has to be in Harlem because there's a lot of places all over New York City that you could go. But if we talk about Harlem, we're going to stay in Harlem. So I said, the first year, we had too many people talking. So we took it to a church, one of the biggest churches in Harlem. Salem Church has a hell of a history. Used to have boxing in the gym. Sugar Ray Robinson used to box in the gym. You know, Bobby Hunter used to be a Boy Scout at Salem Church. I remember all his life. Lloyd Williams, the guy who runs Harlem Week. This is the 50th anniversary. He's being inducted this year for the work he does in Harlem every year the years giving a whole week of work for him are uh, ex-basketball players who didn't know what to do when the basketball was over so he gave them another way to give back also making money that's why he's being on because he gave a lot of guys who played basketball and when the basketball was over didn't know what to do but they knew a lot of people so he brings them in and they go around Harlem and make connections. So basketball, once again, is being used as a vehicle. Great basketball player, private school, Marquette University, New York Knicks, had an unfortunate death, but that's not his life. His life was bigger than the little tragedy that people try to hold over his back. The majority of his life, he was an outstanding basketball player, mentor, guided me when I was young. So we had to get him in there. Okay? Pablo Robinson and his brother Walter Robinson. Both went to the same junior high school. They went to Clinton High School first. Then I went to Brandon, but they went to Clinton. They both went to Loyola University. Pablo was a member of the Loyola University team that won the NCAA tournament but they wasn't so popular because they only had four black guys. See, Texas Sus Western had five. They had four. So they didn't get, you know, there's no story with that. But we know that. All right? Then we have some younger guys that's going in and what standing basketball players in the community have a lot of people like them. They didn't go as far as they should have. But you know, life has problems, but we're not going to hold that against them. So those young guys are going in to the Hall of Fame. See, then we have some guys like Pony Wilson, original Harlem Globetrotter, original Harlem Globetrotter. 
not the game later on. You know, they got about a hundred of them now. We talking about when it was only twelve that played on the East Coast, the West Coast, went behind the first team to go behind the curtain and play the Russians. Played in the movie Go Man Go, but when he finished, he went on to New Jersey and was a hell of an educator for over 40 years. And he was all CIAA for three years, all city at Benjamin Franklin, but you would be surprised of the people in Harlem that don't know about him because once again there's no tragedy attached to his name you know more people know about jesse james than the guy that shot him right <laughs> you, 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 you really hit it on the head i want to ask you because we're running to the end of the show what yeah. effect what effect do you want the real harlem basketball players to have on New York City and the community at large. What is the goal? To celebrate the positive things that come out of your community, especially to these kids. If you keep putting bad pictures on the walls and they continue to act bad, and then you fall down. You tell them, you remember W.C. Field said, good guys finish last? Remember that? Right. We got to change that. We got to make a guy that goes away and go to school more popular than a guy who goes to prison and come back home. That's right. right. That's right. We got to make drugs a bad thing again, like it used to be. You know, the drug addicts were real, a small part of the community 40, 50 years ago. You might have one heroin addict in the neighborhood, two or three. You go to Baltimore, you got a whole neighborhood of heroin addicts and a few scared people trying to move around there because they ain't hurt. They ain't not addicts. So we have made doing bad popular. That's right. You said something, have... you said something very interesting before the show. You said we're spending too much time on treatment and not enough time on educating and preventing. Tell me a little bit about that. But then, well, say for instance, I had a cousin that was a heroin addict. I was a young man. He's sitting out on the stoop in Harlem, and he's telling me, after he gave this guy's money and got his heroin, don't you ever mess with this. The only time you ever see me smile is when I'm giving this, this guy my, my, my money. Now, he had a $1,500 a day. Heroin had Wow. But he got it. So you know how much heroin it takes to substitute for morphine. Right. And this is how it first hit the community with the guys coming back from war, the war injured that had drug problems. And because before that, we didn't have it. I mean, you come to Harlem before that, everybody's dancing and jazz and, you know, it's a fun place. But introduced to some guys and they came back to the community and then some other guys who I don't think are good saw a chance to make money. But what guy in Harlem produced heroin? It's brought in from somewhere else. And it's given to our community and it has destroyed it. So we got to start with the kids and let the kids know and be strong enough to say no to drugs. And I really mean say no. You had Whoopi Goldberg one time say, how you gonna say no to drugs when somebody giving you all this money? It's not gonna last. I worked in the prison system for a long time. You're going to prison or you're gonna die. And you're not getting no social security or no retirement. So the drugs ain't done nothing for us ever. You show me a person sell drugs, I'll show you the tragedy at the end. High school with a lot of guys from overseas. You know, and you know, they you know, had, they had, they had, you know, Tank, what I'm going to tell you, I would love to keep talking with you. You're a real guy. I see why you're head of the real basketball players of Harlem because you're, you're a real guy of the world. <laughs> you're a real guy. 
you have real advice. Uh, unfortunately, um, I apologize, we ran out of time, but I want to invite all the viewers this Saturday to the Real Harlem Basketball Players Induction event and also to Sunday where they're going to have their classic between Philadelphia and New York and everybody wins because it's for the community. Thank you for being on the show. Before you go, how did you like the food you received in Washington, D.C.? I loved it. I made that happen. Well, thank you so much. And I look forward to being with you on Saturday and Bobby Hunter and all the rest of you. And I'm, I'll try to make it Sunday. For those of you watching, let's heed Tank Barnes' words. Let's do something real. Let's protect our communities. Let's move forward. Let's work together. Have a good night. This show was sponsored by A Time for Truth Foundation Incorporated as a community service. Sometimes life can be so damn hard You don't know where to go Everything keeps falling apart Yeah You try to do your best but Only God knows that you've given everything you've got But the world takes you down you just keep moving on at your feet.